Failover is a technique of switching to a redundant backup machine when a certain machine goes down. This is a very common implementation for, for achieving high availability and it is often mixed with the different load balancing techniques such as layer four and layer seven load balancing. In this video, I wanna go through the following. I wanna talk about what is a failover, right? What, is, what exactly is that failover from a very high level perspective, just talking about it. Then I'm gonna go through some details that are very necessary to understand how failover works, right? So I'm gonna talk about ARP, what is ARP? We made a video about ARP, but I wanna just glance over the idea of ARP, really, address a resolution protocol that is. And then we're gonna talk about very important concept for failover, which is the virtual IP address, okay? VIP, okay? And we're gonna talk about the virtual routing re redundancy protocol as well, which is these go most of the time hand on hand, okay? I'm gonna talk about what is a virtual IP. It's not really a real IP, it's just a virtual one that a machine advertises, right? But we're gonna talk about that. And then finally, we're gonna talk about an example, a high availability example, how it actually works with real uh, software, right? This example, we're not gonna show an actual hands-on demo in this video, it's just gonna be talking, but just going through the details essentially. If you're interested, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video with that say, let's just jump into failover. So let's talk about what is actually a failover, right? Let's assume I have a client and it's connecting to like a, a server or a machine, right? And that essentially making a request and that eventually hits a database somewhere, okay? And give you their back the results, right? Failover is when that machine goes down, that client will automatically direct request to another machine, right? That is in the same, what we call, quote unquote, cluster, okay? So the way we're doing that, the client has no idea that a failover has happened. That's the trick here. The client, there is no redundancy in the client itself. It didn't change an IP address. It didn't do any goofy stuff like that. It didn't check for availability. It just happened, right? Some, something happened on the back end, and then we flipped the servers to communicate with another completely different server. So how does that happen? right? What do we do? We change IP addresses? We can't because the client communicates with one IP address. We cannot just change that, right? So it's like always think about that, like right? what exactly happened? Let's talk about ARP first, Address Resolution Protocol. So guys, if machines want to communicate with each other, we usually, as software engineer, we deal with IP addresses. That's the lowest we go to. That's the lowest level we go to, IP addresses, right? I do get 10.0.0.1 colon 80.80 slash, and that give me whatever, JSON response, right? But what machines deal with, it's not really IP addresses if you think about it. They deal with physical addresses, which are also called MAC addresses, right? Media access control, something like that. So how... If I am a programmer, I specified to connect to an IP address, how does the machine know the MAC address, right? Because that's what they communicate in, right? So, so that's, that's really weird, right? How do we convert from an IP address to a MAC address? The answer is ARP. It's called Address Resolution Protocol. And we do this all the time, and we have no idea that is happening. It's just completely uh, happening transparently. Okay, I made a video about ARP. If you're interested to know more details about that, I'm gonna reference that video. But here's what happened. If I am making GET request, for example, for 10.0.0.1, the first question that my client asks is, who has the IP address 10.0.0.1? It asks this question to everyone in the network. Okay, there's a little bit caveat there, but let's skip it. Once it asks that question, all the machines will receive that uh, question and will answer, hey, it's actually me. Machine AAA will answer 
with that with its MAC address saying, hey, this is actually me. You can communicate with me. So it will start building its frame with a destination MAC address as AAA and the destination IP address as 10.0.0.1. So that's how Mac uh, uh, ARP works, right? So now we can make the request and goes all that. Down. So if I want to ask another question, it's like, who has the IP address 10.0.0.2? I want to communicate to another IP address. What will happen is, same thing. This machine will not answer. This machine will answer because it owns the uh, MAC address BBBB, correct? So that's what happens. We get BB and then we build the frames. Destination MAC address is BBB and our destination uh, IP address is 10.0.0.2. Receive it, do all that jazz and make a request, right? So that's, that's what happens. So that's what ARP. Let's understand this because it's very critical that you guys understand this for the next point, which is the virtual IP address, okay? Let's assume this scenario, okay? I have two machines here. They each have their own physical IP address, 10.0.0.1. This has 10.0.0.2. This has MAC address AA. This has MAC address BBB, okay? And those machines are special. They have a special software, okay? And this software allows these two machines to communicate with each other, okay? And this is called a heartbeat. They send heartbeat to each other. Hey, sup, sup, sup. They just talk to each other, okay? And they agree on a master node, or you call it a leader node, right? Or a main low, uh, node. And they agree also who are the backup nodes, right? Once they do that, they also agree on a single virtual IP address that doesn't really exist in the real world. It's just they agree between each other. Okay? You put in the configuration that, hey, I want you to have a virtual IP address of 10.0.0.100, and I want you to have a 10.0.0.100. It's like, oh, Hussein, that's a bad idea. I, I configured IP addresses back in the 90s, and you get conflict IP address. Nope, you don't. And I'm going to tell you how. Because there is no single, there is no two machines with the same virtual IP address in this case. There's only one. Those guys communicate and they say, okay, you're the master node. I'm going to be the backup. You answer the requests for this IP address, this virtual IP address. Because it's just an ARP request, guys. It's all software. It's not magic, right? Because now what will happen is this, this virtual IP suddenly appeared in existence all of a sudden, okay? Now, if the client asks a question, who has the IP address 10.0.0.100? It's going to ask everybody in the network. And guess what? It's going to get this guy going to get uh, uh, the question. This guy's going to get the question. This guy is smart enough, says, okay, yeah, I do have the 10.0.0.100, but I am not the master node for this uh, virtual IP address. There is someone else. I'm not going to tell you anything. So I'm just going to drop that question. This guy received that question. He says, yep, I am the main. I'm your main. And it's going to respond with machine AAA. And once I do that, I'm going to put the destination MAC address as AAA. I'm going to put the destination virtual IP address or IP address as 10.0.0.100. And I'm going to send that over. And then you just funnel the request to anything on the back end. That could be Node.js, that could be Nginx, that could be HA proxy, caddy, anything really, right? But that's the trick is just at the lower level of this low level protocol, ARP, we play that trick, okay? So let's, let's throw in some monkey wrenches here. Let's assume the master died. I don't know. We unplugged it. It became unresponsive, right? It just died. You unplugged it or just become overloaded and CP over, uh, overflow memory, anything, right? Just died. Remember, those guys always send heartbeat to each other. So, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? That other machine, machine BBB, so ask his question. Hey, what's up? And it didn't get any response. Hey, are you there? Are you there? Yep, it's dead. Call it, call it, I'm the master now. So it's gonna assume the role of the master node for the IP address 10.0.0.100. Guess what? 
and it's gonna tell the entire network that, hey, by the way, it's now me, right? I'm the OG now, okay? It's gonna say that, by the way, 100, 10-0-0-100, it's moi. It's BBB now. It's not AAA, right? And everybody was gonna update their ARP tables and all that jazz. And now, if I make a request, automatically the request goes there. Here's the, here's the, here's the deal, guys. That takes fraction of a second, obviously, because you gotta tell people that hey, uh, AA is dead. It's now me, right? I'm the OG now. Don't trust that OG, okay? So then everybody's just gonna talk to each other and that might take split of a second. So you might, in a high availability, you might still see some, the clients might still, older clients, stale clients, that, that still think that uh, 100, the 10 0 100 has the MAC address of AAA, will still send requests to that and they will be dead essentially until their ARP table gets updated with a new MAC address they will essentially uh, forward the request to that other request so that whole thing right is called the whole protocol that we discussed is called virtual router redundancy protocol those guys are acting like a virtual router because that's how a router works right guys it's a gateway it's like thinking of a gateway, okay? So that VRRP is what we talked about. There is a group of machines. There are multiple machines. They all share the same VIP and they talk within each other and they gossip and agree on a master, kind of like Zookeeper in a sense, right? But it's a lower level than Zookeeper. And they agree. So say, hey, it's me, it's me, it's me, right? That's a master, that's a backup. And once you do that, that's it. That's called the virtual router redundancy protocol. So that's where the VRRP and that's where the VIP. So if, I, if someone asks you what a virtual IP address is, it's essentially, it's just a fictitious thing that machines advertise as their answer to ARP requests, right? That's why you guys, you have to understand ARP requests. ARP requests is very network specific, but software engineers, you guys really need to understand this stuff, right? Let's take an example, a real life high availability examples. Let's describe what we have here. There's a lot of garbage. There are a bunch of machines. There is a load balancer. There is our back end service and there is a database, okay? And you can just basically, you can do a primary, secondary database if you like. I just have the one. But here's what let's just talk about. This is a Postgres database. These guys are Docker containers, for example or could be like different machines, or it could be in the same machine, who cares? They're the same machine, spinning different ports, different applications. We have done that in, the, in this channel so many times. So I'm gonna reference the video here if you're interested. So you spin up a Node.js, Node.js, they, I don't know, they serve employees, REST endpoint, right? If you're still doing REST, right? <laughs> and there is a load balancer, could be HA proxy, could be Nginx, could be Caddy, could be Hitch, anything, right? Could be Envoy, could be Linkerd. What happened here is this is HA proxy for example, right? Could be anything else. And that, let's let's say this is a layer seven load balancer, okay? It acts uh, because it, it, it knows that there, it, it, it wants to look at the content and makes decisions based on the header uh, headers and, 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 and uh, URLs and, and maybe route requests and maybe uh, load balances different algorithm based on that, okay? So it looks at that stuff. And you have another software installed called Kiba Life. That's one of the softwares that, can you say softwares? I don't think that's a word, okay? That's one of the software that allow you to do high availability and supports this uh, thing we talked about, the VRRP, which is the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, okay? That's a software that supports the VRRP. And you give it a group, of machines and you give it the same VIP, which is the virtual IP address, and it just it just it just does its job. It will give you one master virtual IP address and you share this virtual IP with people to the public. You put it as a DNS A record and people will connect to DNS, will connect to the virtual IP, will hit that, keep alive, will decide who is the master based on an answer to an ARP call and will give you the MAC address, communicate with that. Once you do that, the 
load balancer will take over, take that request, and then follow it. Let's, let's take an example. I'm making a get request. Employees, look at that. Look what happened. I'm going to do it again. So we hit this one. So we hit that, right? The keep alive. That decide this is the master. This is the secondary node. It's exactly the same software. Copy and paste different machine. So HA proxy, the same configuration. This guy communicate with these guys. This guy communicate with these guys. But this guy is active. What does that mean? Active. This is like a more like, more like an active passive. Uh, another another uh, configuration called active passive. Right. There's another configuration called called active active which we can talk about in another video but active passive is this is active this is a passive all the requests comes to this guy first and once it requests you get back the json response and you make another request and a proxy decides to send this request to this node this time and you get the exact result and your proxy can send it back to this node and instead and so on you can throw in a, an http accelerator in the middle right maybe here right to cache employees request because you don't really want to hit the database every time, right? Like varnish, you can put varnish here, okay? And then cache this stuff and secure it and determine the TLS and then all that jazz, right? And then that's how it works basically, right? Let's throw in a monkey wrench. Let's kill server one. I don't know, HA proxy died on this machine, right? What will happen? Keep alive. It's gonna keep us alive. Keep alive, what we'll do? It will make machine two as active machine two as the master and it will start responding to ARP request and will start broadcasting the its MAC address to the internal network and then machines when when a client connect now what will happen is this machine will take over and as you can see right so this is very simple thing right so that's an example of a basic high availability system using failover right summary so what did we learn we learned what a failover is. It's basically, if a machine goes down, another machine takes over with, this is the caveat, the client has no idea that the machine went, uh, went down. It just swizzles, the, the request will be swizzled automatically to another machine, right? Okay, and that machine could be the load balancer itself. The load balancer can go down. And that's where most production companies do that they put the failover on the load balancer itself okay so it's like if that load balancer is dead okay it will just swizzle to another exact copy of the load balancer and since this stuff is stateless and it better be stateless right everything is gonna work magically right if you have a stateful application tough luck man we talked about arp address resolution and protocol talked about how how basically it answers to mac addresses to an ip address it asks the question who has this ip address it's going to give you a mac address and the machine will just use that mac address and will send the uh, frames right i'm going to talk about uh go, check out our osi model uh video that we made it's it's really critical because you understand these layers layers two and layer three and layer four and layer five and layer six and layer seven you don't care about layer five and six much layer seven layer four eh, maybe layer two is the most important layer to me at least as a software engineer okay we're talking about virtual ip we're talking about virtual redundancy router oracle i butchered that name i know Right, and when we talked about also that how how we have this group of machines, they all agree on a single IP address, which is virtual, doesn't really exist, right? But they all agree on it, and when they agree on it, they also agree who's who's gonna be the active node, and that active node is gonna respond to ARP requests, and that will allow us to. That, that's the trick we're playing here. We're playing on the ARP request uh, play, track here. And then we talked about a high availability example, right? And we talked about HA proxy videos, guys. We made a course about HA proxy. I'm planning to make a specific dedicated course about HA proxy and keep alive how you both of them in a production system, right? And uh, hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit shorter. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.